Listen up, real estate investors, entrepreneurs, and agents. You're in the right place. Unlocking the secrets to real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Welcome to the Titanium Vault, hosted by RJ Bates III. Here's RJ. Hello, and welcome to the Titanium Vault. I'm your host, RJ Bates. Today, I'm sitting down with Aaron Bevins. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing phenomenal. It's a beautiful day in San Antonio. It's sunny San Antonio right now, man. Dude, I got to tell you guys, you know, I, I'm friends with a lot of you guys down in San Antonio. Y'all have more pride in your city than anybody else, I think, in the entire nation. Y'all talk about San Antonio, Texas, more than any other city in the United States. I mean, you and Quentin and, and Mitzi and all of you down there, y'all love San Antonio. Yeah, man. I, and, you know, that now that you say that, it's very, very true the more I think about it. And um, I think it's because we've been called the armpit of Texas so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're so determined to change that. But, but man, I mean, I legit love the city. The city raised me. I feel like I wouldn't be. And I've been everywhere, man. I lived in Brooklyn for some time, lived in in Harlem for some time, lived in Chicago, but San Antonio has my heart, dude. That's crazy. You know what? And I don't understand why people will call San Antonio the armpit of Texas. I mean, you got the Riverwalk, you got the Alamo. It's a pretty clean city. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's a cool place. So I, I don't know why people feel that way. But anyways, enough about San Antonio. So uh, real quick, take a, a quick second, just kind of briefly introduce yourself and tell everybody what it is that you do in real estate investing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So my name is Aaron Bevins. I am co-owner of Justice Cash Buyers. And the bread and butter of our business is basically wholesaling. We have done a couple hotel deals. Um, but yeah, the bread and butter is, is wholesaling all day. Awesome. And how long have you been in? Uh, how long have you been wholesaling? Um, like actually running a business, like, like actually full time. Doing it. Yeah, don't, don't count the ones where you didn't know what the hell you were doing. Yeah, full time. How okay. long have you been full time? One year and seven days. Look at that. You're like, I got it down right here. 372 <laughs> days, boss. And 33 minutes. Yep. Cool. So, so I, you know, I, I saw you speak at uh, Quentin Flores' event down in San Antonio. I was blown away by your energy. And, and just the passion that you have for, for your business and for the life that you want to create for yourself. So what brought you to real estate investing? Man, so, um, so first of all, um, my major, the, the major driver behind the passion is, is not real estate in itself, okay. but it's entrepreneurship. That, that's, that's, my major, that's my major thing. And the reason why entrepreneurship and, and I'm so passionate about it is because um, I remember watching my mom work uh, a full-time job and she would work the night shift. And I saw how much she, she was working. And I remember, I don't know if I stumbled off one of her, on her, one of her paychecks or because as kids, you know, we don't know how much mom and dad makes, you know, and yeah. I don't care to ask, you know, our life is good, right? Um, or at least we didn't know we were poor. I, and I never even say that. I even felt stupid even saying that now. But compared to, you know, normal people's standards, living in a trailer house, you know what I mean, uh, on the side of town that I lived on, with the amount of money my parents made, most people would consider us poor, right? But um, I had an awesome upbringing. I had amazing parents, you know what I mean? But I remember one day um, seeing how much my mom made and uh, I jokingly asked her, you know, how long, you know, was that work period? And she was like, two weeks. And I was like, well, so I, I, ran the, I ran the math in my head and I'm like, okay, with this many hours, she was making like seven or eight dollars an hour. And I was like, I remember this in my head, like, screw the guy that's only paying my mom this amount of money for how hard she works. You know what I mean? But, you know, over time, I realized that, no, not screw the guy, because he's not inherently a bad dude. Um, instead of having that attitude, well, I want to become that guy. So I've always known that I want to be a business owner. I've always known that I wanted to be the entrepreneur, not the 
um, person working. Not that one is better than the other, I just don't identify with the person working. I wanted to be the person that was providing the job, you know what I mean? So. Oh, I know exactly what you mean, man. I had a similar uh, circumstance as a child. Um, I, my dad was vice president of a, a huge uh, organization here in Dallas-Fort Worth, and essentially he got called into an office out of the blue, mm-hmm. and there was three people in the room. And they said, two of you are going to maintain a job. Two of you will get paid more, but one of you will be let go. Hmm. You can either take this package, which included a substantial amount of money and leave, or you can run the risk that you're going to be one of the people that gets the raise. Or... If you, if none of you take this, one of you will be let go and you get nothing. Mm. And my dad was sitting in the room and he was in his thirties and he was sitting next to two guys in his twenties, making a lot less money than him. And it was pretty clear. Yeah. He was the guy getting let go. Right. Mm -hmm. So my dad took the package and he took that money and he started his own business And what was crazy is, is I was very young when this happened, but before that we took these uh, amazing vacations, two week long vacations where we went to Disney world and the beach and all this crazy stuff. And, you know, I was living this amazing life. And then all of a sudden my dad becomes an entrepreneur and we no longer take those kind of vacations anymore because he's running his own business and he's starting from zero. But I do remember that now my dad showed up to every baseball practice. Mm -hmm. He was at every hockey game. And suddenly as a kid, I didn't care about the one week at Disney World because life was better. Like my dad could do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. And then later, you know, four, five, six years later, suddenly – we're back to vacationing. Again. <laughs> That's so cool. Life's dude. good. <laughs> and he still has the time to do whatever he wants with me. You know what uh, I'm saying? Uh, and so as a child, like I watched that entrepreneur journey for my, my parents. Uh, I say my dad, my, my mom immediately became a part of the business with my sure, dad. Sure. And, and I watched that and I never knew what I wanted to do either. Like I, I, there wasn't a time when I was like 18 where I was like, I'm going to be a wholesaler. I'm going to be a real estate investor. You know, it was just like, yeah. I'm going to own a bunch of businesses. That's what I used to tell people. Yeah. Yeah. So I resonate with that part of your story where it's like, it, now I have a passion for real estate investing. Mm-hmm. But it all started back then watching my parents' journey as an entrepreneur. And I knew I wanted that because, and, and for a very long time, I didn't live that dream. Mm-hmm. I went and worked for someone else. And then that's when I, you know, I was 26 years old when I was like, the hell am I doing? Like I'm, I'm living somebody else's life. Mm-hmm. So that, that, I appreciate you saying that because I think so often, like, especially on podcasts like this, right? We're, we're here to talk about real estate investing and yeah. to, to tell people about that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. so often it becomes like, yeah, real estate investing is my passion and it's, it's what drives me and in all reality. No, it's not really, you know? Uh, and I appreciate you saying that. So, so that's why you got into the starting your own business. But why did you choose real estate investing? So, so there, there are three components. There's the entrepreneurship side that, so there are three, three huge things in terms of the business that drives me, right? Um, there's the entrepreneurship. Uh, the second component is self-development. I, I'm so, I'm so passionate about that because I, and it was it was actually a Robert Kiyosaki um, interview I remember watching back in this must have been like 2013 but but it it it, it stayed with me and he said um, you you get to choose the problems that you have and the problems you choose in advance determine how big you need to get in order to tackle that problem. Right. So he says some people can't um, some people can't fathom running a million dollar company, um, which is, you know, in terms of 
fundamental math, you call it a problem, right? Or you could call it a challenge, or you can call it a goal, right? Or you can call it an objective or a purpose, right? But Robert Kiyosaki called it a problem. He said, you choose your problem in advance, and then you grow big enough to, to attack that problem successfully. So if your problem is a million dollars, then I have to become a, 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 a million, worthy of a million dollars and then attack that problem in order to, to conquer it, right? So um, I said, okay, so that's it. So entrepreneurship is what I'm going to do. In order to do that, my problem, that means I have to become an entrepreneur, <laughs> right? So, so I realized the second, the second uh, component was self-development. And I noticed that in the entrepreneur field with my introduction from Robert Kiyosaki, it was like, there's so many people uh, that the big, the big hitters that talk about self-development while getting into real estate. And I, and I, and I was like, I, I feel like I understand why, because, you know, we're talking about, I mean, shoot, R RJ, we were talking about that deal I was trying to do with you. And, and if I, w I was blown away with how you were throwing around millions of dollars, <laughs> like it was nothing for me. My heart was racing that whole conversation, just confessing right now, man. Hey, that's fine, man. I, I, I appreciate you saying that because here's the thing though. It's like, you're talking about though, you become that way. Yeah. I don't know at what point in time to me saying, no, we're not going to offer 9.6 million. We're going to offer $9 million became like just, that was like no different for me that day than saying, Hey, Lindsay, I want a, a turkey sandwich for lunch today. Yeah. I don't know when that happened. <laughs> and, and sometimes there, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. There are days where I'm like, what in the world did I just say that? Did I just say we'll offer $9 million? Like that's a lot of money, you know, yeah. but in all reality, it's just a number to me now. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Which means, which means you have grown into that person. Right. And I felt, I felt myself stretching and I know that cause I was getting nervous, you know, <laughs> but, but so, so that's one of the things that drew me that second component drew me now to, to real estate itself. Um, so I, I was introduced through my, my uh, father-in-law to a Robert Kiyosaki course that was coming to Chicago at the time. Yep. It was a, uh, it was a little 30 minute seminar. You could, you know, sign up online. We sent an, you know, send the email, got our invite. We went and this guy was talking about, um, how he made $20,000 by getting a property under contract, not using any money and then selling his interest in the contract. And I was like, I was like, this sounds illegal, man. <laughs> and, and my wife's dad was like, no, I've done that before. It's called wholesaling. So, so, you know, I was like, wait, so we can legit do that. He was like, yeah, I have all the resources. I'm like, how come you never told me about this? He's like, that's what I'm trying to do right now. You know? <laughs> So backstory behind that is um, when, when my wife and I got married, I was a painter. And, and, and when I say painter, like not artistically, like painting outsides of houses and like painting the inside, you know what I mean? Right, right. My, my wife was already an entrepreneur. She had already built a brand for herself in, in the, the greater Chicagoland area. And she was growing and, 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 uh, and building, you know? And it was like a year and a half, two years into marriage. And she says, hey, um, I don't like the way I'm starting to feel about you. And I'm like, what are you talking about, yo? Like, it feels good. Like, I, I thought everything was going good. But basically what she was saying was, um, I don't like, I feel like that I'm growing each, each month, each quarter, each year I'm growing. But I feel like you're, you, um, it's almost like you're stagnant. You know what I mean? And she was like, I don't like seeing you that way because you have so much more potential. So she was really, she was stretching me in a major way because I didn't see my potential at the time, but she did. And it was just really, really uncomfortable. Um, her, you know, to have to come face to face with that, especially when you're not ready for it. You know what I mean? Um, so whenever her, her dad had brought up this whole Robert Kiyosaki thing, 
Um, and then now I'm hearing that it's possible and I'm hearing what the dude made on it. I'm like, let's go. So that's when I, I jumped into, uh, as they call it, YouTube University, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and started so, and started I was going to say something real quick about what your wife said to you. Yeah. Like, I've watched you over the past probably six months. You have such an undying drive and, like, charisma about you. Like, it is actually shocking to hear that there was a point in time in your life that, like, you weren't realizing your capabilities, like, your, your calling in this life. And I think that happens to a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we get into this rut, and, and we're not surrounding ourselves with the right people that are saying, dude, wake up. Yeah. Do more. Like, you don't need to go paint a house because you have the ability to go run a seven-figure company and you have the ability to inspire millions of people. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, like, I, I'm, I'm putting this out there. I'm going to be the first person to say it if somebody else hasn't said it. You will inspire millions of people in this world because that's who you are. Like, I, I can just see it about you. And, and that's amazing that you have a partner in your life that was willing to have that uncomfortable conversation and say, you need to wake up and you need to grow. That is a testament to your wife and who she is as a person, as a partner for you. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. But let, let, and let me, let me just, here's another dose of reality though. And I think you had mentioned something that a lot of us don't have that in our life, right? Um, but but I, I would I would say this. All of us at some point do have it in our life, right? But what happens is when that person or 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 tragedy or or situation comes up and tells us, hey, you suck right now, and that's why you are where you are. Um, what happens is we either excuse it. Or, or we, we close off that friendship or we're no longer close because you did that. That really hurt me. Um, and, and I'll say this, and I'll say this. That conversation my wife had with me, um, it caused a lot, of, a lot more hurt and damage. Not that she meant it, nor should it have been taken that way. Um, then, it, then it should have. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're now just getting to the point where we're like recovering and like gaining momentum again. You know what I mean? But I think that, I think that a lot of us have that sometimes it's mom, sometimes it's dad, or sometimes we've let bad habits, you know, run our life for so long that we go into foreclosure or, or we're getting the divorce or the business utterly fails, but it's, it's reality come, coming to you and saying, this is your fault take responsibility for this. But too often we're like, no, it's not, you know, this person should have did this or, 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 uh, this, this should have happened a different way. And maybe I'd be a whole lot better off or I mean, I shouldn't have grown up that way. And we don't take responsibility and say, no, that's actually someone who cares about you or the universe that God has designed God telling you, you need to wake up and you can change everything. You know what I mean? Bro, I'm, I'm telling you, Pride and ego can hold you down for so long. Mm -hmm. I had a circumstance, probably, I posted about this in our Facebook group, The Vault, um, either last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, is we are working on some larger portfolio deals, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been a trying experience to say the least. Like this has been ongoing since February. There's been title issues. Um, there's been changing of the properties in the portfolios. Which ones can we buy now? Which ones can we buy later? It's just been a very trying experience, right? And the person, my point of contact in this deal, he's you know, older than me, more experienced, um, he, he's worked in wall street. He has a lot more experience in this industry than me. Right. Mm -hmm. And we got into a conversation and it was a heated one. Okay. Professional, but heated. And 
he was coming from his point of view and I was coming from my point of view and neither one of us was wrong. Okay. And sometimes people have to understand that in an argument, there's not always someone that's right. Both people can actually be right. And you just, there's not a whole lot of uh, solution there right then at that moment, if you're disagreeing with each other and that's yeah. kind of what was happening. Mm -hmm. And he made a comment. He said, as a street level investor, you don't understand what's happening right now. Okay. Now, mind you, I am the guy that shows up to a networking event and I don't move for an hour because people come up to me and they see me on the podcast or they see me on Propelio TV and they want to talk to me and they want to pump my ego up and tell me how amazing I am. Right. You inspire me, RJ. Oh, it's the beard. Oh, titanium investments, Hawaii, Alaska, right? I can let that go to my head, right? At this point in time, I could have been like, screw you, dude. Do you know who I am? But that would have been stupid because what he was saying was a fact. Mm. I have not done anything that amazing yet. I didn't understand what was happening. And what he was telling me, I needed to listen. I needed to put my pride and ego aside and mm -hmm. listen to what the, the wisdom that he was sharing with me. And sometimes when people share wisdom with you, it's not fun. Yeah. Right? It's not always like, oh my God, I'm so much better now that you just told me. <laughs> <laughs> but those are feelings. And guess what? Yeah. I've never cashed a check with a bunch of feelings. Okay. So I had to sit there and put my feelings <laughs> aside and become better at that moment and realize what he was telling me was facts. And so I listened, I swallowed my pride, didn't tell him the F off. And now we're, we're marching down the path to get those deals closed. And now I will cash a check from those, not with my feelings that I wanted. I wanted to tell him the F off because that was right. Like that's, that's, that's what we're told all the time. Social media world, right? You post a cool picture on Instagram and 3,000 people like it. It's like, I'm the, I'm the best thing in the world. And then I got this guy calling me a street level investor. He doesn't even know what Instagram is. <laughs> you know? but, but he's over there cashing million dollar checks and we're getting 3,000 likes. <laughs> Who's better? This is so true, bro. Oh my goodness. You are preaching right now, man. So, you are so that's why I just wanted to say that because yeah. it's, it's important that how you handle those situations and it doesn't matter what level you're at, right? Like you, you were at the level where you were painting houses and your wife was an entrepreneur building a brand for herself. And she said, Hey, you got to level up, right? Mm -hmm. Here I am. I'm running, you know, multiple businesses across the country. We're flipping houses. I'm looking at, you know, hundreds of properties on my boards here. And this guy's calling me a street level investor. <laughs> now I wouldn't have ever called myself that. Then all of a sudden I started looking at it and I go, yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty street level. That's, mm -hmm. that's a fact. And so I had to listen to that. And you know what? There, I hope there's a point in time here in the next five years where I've leveled up 10 times and someone else teaches me and, and pours wisdom into me where it's uncomfortable, where I have to level up again. Yeah. So there you go. There, that's my rant for this episode. I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Aaron. <laughs> no, no, no. I love it, man. I'm, I'm benefiting, bro. I'm soaking it all <laughs> in, dude. Well, you know, it, it's, it's funny. Sometimes there's just these moments where it's like you're, you're talking about something that's happened, and I've got something that I can share that, that really, like, just happened. And, and, and you know, I, I hope that those stories right there resonate with somebody and they realize it. Maybe even you realize, like, after listening, like, man, I just had one of those moments and I reacted poorly. Yeah. Go back. Apologize. Go to that person and say, hey, I should have reacted better. And, and, I, and I want the wisdom. What, what do you mean by level up? What do you mean I need to, to be better? I yeah. need to grow with you. You know, and like you said, it could be mom, dad, wife, friend. <laughs> this was, this was, a, this was a, a, a freaking seller of a property. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like this is a seller. <laughs> this isn't even somebody that knows me. <laughs> like, Ooh. 
So, anyways, all right, let's get back to your story. I, I'll I'll stop ranting about that because we can. No, no, it's good. It's good. I want I wanted to bring something out though before we get back, bro. Yeah. Uh, I, I just finished reading a book for the second time called Psycho Cybernetics, and I think I have a goal now to be reading another book, but to be constantly studying this book, Psycho Cybernetics. Okay. And the reason the reason why is because and and I know and I know this is primarily a real estate investing podcast, but I think that this stuff is so important in this business because it talked about. Um, something called emotional carryover, emotional carryover. And this is major in real estate that I think is needed because, uh, and, 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 and you know this, RJ, you can, you, can, you can get hit in the nuts the way you did. I don't know if I can say that. You can uh, say whatever you want, buddy. So, so, so you can get kicked in the nuts by a seller, and I'm sure that that, that, that conversation for the next 30 minutes kind of had you in your body a little bit, like you were kind of in your feelings a little bit, right? Um, so, if, if, uh, they, and one of the things that I mentioned was emotionally weak people, emotionally weak people um, have strong emotional carryover, which means one incident uh, makes them feel angry, and so they do not know how to restrain that emotion and contain it within that incident, and so they take that anger into the next negotiation. Mm. But that negotiation has nothing to do with that, that one where the seller just pissed you off, mm -hmm. right? So what happens is now I'm a, I'm a little on edge. My butt cheeks are clenched. You know what I mean? My, my fist is bald. And I'm talking to somebody who legit has a need. And they ask me, well, well how come you're, 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 why would you only pay that much? They want to sell. But I take that offensively because I'm in that angry state. And I'm like, you know what? If you don't want to sell it, then I'll just call you back next week. Hang up. And then the next, the next guy who's in a good state, right, um, locks the deal up for, for, for 40000 less than what we originally offered. You know what I mean? Oh, man. You're, I, there, there are so many things that you said there. First and foremost, the seller has a need, right? Mm -hmm. You're ignoring their need so you can feed to your own emotions. Yeah. And who did that impact? You, your company, your team members, your bank account, your family. So you could sit there and feel sorry for yourself because somebody told you something you didn't like. Yeah. That, that's why there should be no other way to say it than weak, emotionally weak. Like, yeah. no, 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 I know, I, know, I know you're the millennial entrepreneur. And, and I know, you know, we got to be careful about what we say nowadays, but that's weak. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody needs to understand that. Like if you're, if you're being weak, we don't need to sugarcoat it. Like you're impacting well, you're, your company, you're impacting your family, you're impacting your legacy because you want to feed to your emotions. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. And it's, and it's okay to say that because it's like you had mentioned, if, if we're humble enough to, to assess it first and address it, now we can improve. Right. right. And one of the things I love about it and it says, all right, so recognize I'm weak in that area. How can I become stronger? And how do you gauge that? How do you measure that? Well, you, you gauge that by saying, okay, um, you give yourself five minutes to sulk and feel bad and, you know, you curse the dude out and, and, and say all that, you know what I mean? I have five minutes. Now it's on to the next call. Let's go. Game right. time. Right. Smile. I'm smiling now. I, you know, I don't exactly. feel it, but I'm smiling. Let's and, and go. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, there's something about you because the way that you handle certain situations, I've seen you do Facebook lives. I've seen you do interviews and things like that. You have that about you. And, and I see that in you. And is that something that you regularly talk to your team about? So, so um, almost every team meeting that we've ever had, there's always been something with self-development that, that, I, that I bring in. But man, um, specifically asking that question about I think I would, I know, I, I, I say I would probably need to talk to them more about that. You know what I mean? But, but I'm, with, like you said, self-development is a part of your company culture. It's something that y'all talk about regularly. 
Yeah. Majorly, majorly, major, majorly. Like to the point where, to the point where like, uh, my business partner, Annalise, she knows what books I'm in. Like I will, I'll share with her um, information from books that I'm reading and I know what books she's reading. And, you know, it kind of, it kind of gives us an idea of, of what areas we're working on and improving on. You know what I mean? I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, Cassie and I are in a mastermind. Mm-hmm. And in this mastermind, we meet quarterly and we have to give a hot seat presentation. And at the end, and during the hot seat presentation, we have to give something to the whole group. Okay. Well, a couple meetings back, I had given something about building relationships. And in this last meeting, I gave something about building relationships. And before the meeting, Cassie said, didn't we already do this? And I said, yeah, but they're not listening. So we're going to give it to them again until they all listen to what the hell I'm talking about. The reason why I bring that up is, is because this self-development that you're talking about and building relationships and Mm -hmm. how you emotionally handle sellers and and cold calling and all this different stuff that you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. We go to these masterminds and everybody wants to talk about what list are you using? What Mm -hmm. script are you using? What's the new amazing marketing tactic that you're using? Okay. And at the end of the day, it's like, why aren't we talking about how we're building relationships with sellers? How we're building rapport? How, why aren't we talking about how we're building relationships with other wholesalers in our area so we can co-wholesale and JV together? Why aren't we talking about that? Because guess what? Direct mail is direct mail. Yeah, there's some things that we can change about it. But at the end of the day, it's a piece of mail. Mm -hmm. And building relationships and having that emotional intelligence that you're talking about and making people want to work with you, no matter what's going on with your day, that is like invaluable. Like you can't put a price tag on that. Yeah. So that's why I bring that up because I I think what you're talking about there about, you know, the self-development of your team – how you handle it. y'all do a lot of cold calling right we do yes that's primarily our our uh our marketing strategy we focus on and, and i've actually i be, i believe i've seen you do cold calls like on facebook lives before and yes your cold calls you and i have two different styles of cold calling you okay. actually how long would you say on average you're on the phone with a seller before you make an offer. Like if, oh. if, it's a, if it's like a legit phone call, they're, they're motivated. How long do you talk to them before you make an offer? We don't, we don't make offers over the phone. There you go. See, yeah. big difference between the two of us. I'll make an offer on the phone. Now, which one's right? Which one's wrong? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> It's, it's two different ways to do it, right? Yeah. But we're yeah. both building rapport differently, right? Mm-hmm. That fits who we are as individuals. Mm-hmm. Now, my whole here's – the, here's the funny thing. My whole team, they don't make offers on the phone either. We set appointments. RJ is the only one that makes sight unseen offers. I can't help myself. <laughs> I'll analyze the deal right there, and I'll, I'll just be like, I don't need to come see your house. I'll offer yeah. you $75,000 right now. And I know I'm not supposed to do it. I make the rules around here and say nobody else can do it. And it's, <laughs> it's funny. That's why I just asked. But, but on average, uh, how long do you think uh, – okay, how long do you think you're on the phone before you get an appointment scheduled? Um, me personally, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, see, mine probably three to four minutes. Wow, respect. See, respect. I, but I just like to move a lot faster, though. And it's two different ways, right? Like you're, you're building that rapport with them. Yeah. I probably don't have as good rapport with them. Okay. Right? okay. I'm trying to be the problem solver. Sure. Are you sure. trying to build rapport where you become like almost friends with them? That, that's how my entire script is built. So, right. so I, I, get, I often get people hitting me up because my script is successful. It, you know what I mean? I, I've, I, I'm, I'm having, I'm having, and, and you know, not to say I don't try, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And I assume that everybody who's, who's reaching out to me and saying, Hey, your script is, is doing wonders for me. I assume that they're telling the truth. Um, 
had one guy um, just just show me the wire transfer. I was like, bro, show me before I, I brag about it. He showed <laughs> me the wire transfer for, for $16,000 and hit his account yesterday using the script. Um, but the whole script is built around the idea of building a rapport that's going to set you apart from everyone else. So for example, RJ, the beginning of the script, and these are out, outgoing cold calls, the beginning of the script, so if I already have your name, RJ Bates, he's the executor for the estate, um, subject property is 123 Main Street. The beginning of my cold call when you say hello is, hey, RJ? Dude, I haven't seen, and maybe there is, I'm not saying there, there isn't. I haven't seen any other whole, whole uh, um, script start like that. It's usually, hey, um, this is Aaron Bevins, I'm, is RJ there? Or I'm looking right. for um, our script is, is like from the very beginning, psychologically in the, you know, neuro linguistically, it's like, we're buddies. Like, I want you to talk to me about your pet cat, talk, <laughs> talk to me about the goldfish that, that your grandson's goldfish that just died. You know what I mean? Um, and, and you should love me, um, even to the point of when we're there walking the property, um, me, me and Annalise, we already know our mindset is let's talk about all the amazing things first. Man, this is a piece of crap house. I love this location, Mr. Seller. I mean, this is awesome. Talk to me about your memories in it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, that way, that way, because here's the thing. Um, we're going to get to the painful part of the conversation. We're going to get there. But... By the time we get there, I don't want another layer of that I have to get through be the fact that you don't like me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it, at, at least it's going to be someone who likes you who's going to break down the truth of the market value and what an investor can actually pay. And on top of that, now I feel comfortable to let you know, hey, look, I'm, I'm here for profit. This is how much I want to profit off your deal. And if you like me, you're nine times out of 10, they're going to be like, no, 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 no. You have to make a profit. Make sure right. you, you profit in there, sweetie. You know what I mean? Right. Well, let me ask you this. When you developed this script and the way that you cold called, did you do it as if how you would want to be approached if you were the seller? I didn't take that approach per se. I think that's what it is. I didn't take that approach per se. It was... This script was built, no, number one, um, reading the straight, straight line selling by, by uh, um, Wolf of Wall Street guy, Jordan Belfort. Okay. So that, that, that's the premise of it. In, in other words, he says, focus on tonality, tonality, tonality. Be excited as hell, he says, and, be, and, and, and know what you're talking about. Those are the two things. So um, the approach I took was I did it enough times to where this is how – I sound doing it, and then this has gotten the most results, and it's gotten the least hang-ups in the, in the next seven seconds. So if you don't hang up on me in the first seven seconds, then I'm either, I'm going to be able to ask you if you're selling the property, so now I can get a yes or no. If you're not, that's cool. Um, do you have any other property you're willing to sell? Because you like me already. So even though, you know, I, I introduced myself as a home buyer, you kind of like me just based on my tonality and the fact that I'm excited out of this world, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I did, and I'm different from all these other cold callers. So I'm going to ask you, do you have any other property you're interested in selling? Um, we've made, dude, we've made over 20 Gs in the past year just off of that question. And, 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 and I'm saying that because I, I, I know, like I've looked at the numbers, the deals right. that we've just off of asking that question. And then if not, totally fine. If you happen to, to know anybody who's, who needs a cash offer on their property, we can sell quick. Um, we'll give you $500 referral, you know. But thank you for your kindness. You have a nice day. So the reason why I ask that is, is because the way, the reason I talk to sellers the way I do is because that's how I would want to be talked to mm -hmm. and handled if I were cold called in selling a house. Sure. Right. I would want someone to call and just be very straight to the point. Yeah. You want to sell this house? Let me ask you a couple questions. Here's what I can do for you. Boom. Wow. That would blow me away. Now, yep. for me personally, your method of cold calling me could be a it could be a great experience mm -hmm. if 
I find you to be genuine. Yep. If I find you to just be asking me bullshit questions just to ask me and try to be my friend, I'm just going to be like, get to the point. Yeah. Like, you want to yep. buy my house? Buy my house. Made yep. me an offer right now. Okay, mm -hmm. why do you need to come see it? No, 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 no. You called me. You said you wanted to, you wanted to buy my <laughs> house. Made me an offer, big dog. What, what, where are you going to be before yeah, you waste yeah. my time? You already wasted my time. So that's and let me I say this. And let me say this, RJ. Um, whenever we, whenever I come across those personalities, I try to read them as fast as I can so I can adapt. Because whenever I get on the phone with you, I want to talk to you about the coffee I had real quick. Like, right. I want to just, I want to just briefly tell you how beautiful it is outside. Now let's talk business. You know what I mean? But there have been times when I've been there and, and, and they were on the other side. It was like, yeah, so, so, so what do you want to do? You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> so what are you calling for again? <laughs> well, and that's the thing, you know, there's a, there's a huge difference between talking to, you know, the 75 year old grandmother yeah. And the 40 year old investor who owns a hundred properties that wants to sell five of them. Yeah. Right. Like you have to handle those two situations completely different. And that's where a skill of cold calling and talking to a seller and building different types of rapport yeah. comes into play. And those are the things that I think as investors, if you're wanting to grow, you should talk about regularly and ask questions about, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. said, you have a script, it works, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At that point in time, that is just an outline, right? Exactly. Like, that is not like the end all be all. You're, exactly. you're gonna have to be able to improv yep. and be like, okay, this conversation is not going down this path. There's not a tree on this branch that this conversation is going down. RJ, RJ, what you're saying is so real because I think people mistake the script for some sort of word for word that, that, that you can navigate an entire conversation for, and it's not. The actual scripted part for our company script is legit the first introductory sentences and then after that, after you've identified this is somebody I should spend the next 15 minutes of my day with on the phone, it's just an outline of make sure you get these questions answered. Even if the, even if the answer is, I don't know, what's your offer? Or even if the answer is, I don't know, I haven't seen the house in 10 years. But get it answered, you know what I mean? I think what you're saying is so right. And this is what I say, this is what I say. So what makes the best actors the best actors. Why do you enjoy watching the Leonardo DiCaprio experience? Right. You enjoy it because what he's done is he's taken the script, right? And he's mastered it to the point where I understand why I'm saying this. I understand the character behind this. So, so if in that moment he, he twitches his body like that, that's him. That's Leo. Right. That's not the script. You know what I mean? Right. If, if, he, if he like flicks his hair and it's just, man, it was that little nuance that really brought you in. Um, that's the value of the script. It's mastering the script and making it you as opposed to you succumbing to script and being scripted. There's a difference. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of how sometimes the script just flies out the window right off the bat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got into our CRM. And I'm I'm messing around. I'm 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 cranky, right? Like I'm I'm a pissed off CEO. I'm <laughs> like, why don't we have appointments? Why is nobody out there making offers? What's going on? So I'm in there and I'm looking, and I find a, an old lead from January, uh -huh. okay, and it had been touched and followed up, but not enough, not frequently enough. There have been mistakes made. Like this is this is me being completely transparent, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My shit ain't perfect. Like here it is. There's mistakes being made. Yeah. And so I pull out my cell phone, and I'm like, I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna solve this right now. Dial up the phone number on my cell phone. I put it on speakerphone right here on my desk. Okay. Uh, an elderly woman answers the phone. I'm gonna assume she's in her late 70s, early 80s. Okay. Mm -hmm. She says, this is how she answers the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Said, 
Hello, this is RJ Bates. I want to buy your house. 1110 Main Street, whatever it is. Just, I don't know why I said that. I never, ever do that. I just, that's what came out of my mouth because she was just so straightforward. Like, yeah. I'm like, my name's RJ. I want to buy your house. She said, and I shit you not, dude. She goes, $75,000. And I have all of this in, because we had already talked to her, right? We'd already pulled comps. We had already analyzed it. We already had it right there. And my MAO in my CRM right there says $75,000. I So I go, okay, where can I send the contract? And she goes, you're going to pay me $75,000 just like that. And I said, yes, ma'am. I'm ready to send you a contract right now. And she goes, well, I don't use email or anything like that. I said, okay, can I come to your house right now and sign a contract? And she says, no. I said, well, I want to sign a contract with you. I want to give you the $75,000. And she said, I'm going to my son's graduation. You can come next week and sign a contract. Uh -huh. And I said, okay, I'll be there next week. What day? And she said, Tuesday, you know, 10 a.m., whatever. And it was over. Done. Conversation. Uh -huh. I, I hung up the phone and I went, did that just happen? <laughs> like, straight up. There was, there, was no, there was no relationship building. There was no, no anything. It was yeah. just. That's who she was, right? Mm -hmm. She didn't yeah. want to talk. She was probably watching some show on TV. Yeah, and yeah. She was thinking her, this is not her personal residence. This is like some old rental property that she owns. She, I don't know where she came up in her head that she wanted $75,000, mm -hmm. but that's what she wanted. And so wow. it was over with. Now, had I called and, and been like, okay, here's my script. I have to introduce myself this way. And then I have to do all this. I don't know if that conversation would have gone that way, mm. you know? And like you said, what makes a great actor a great actor, right? It, it's the improv upon the script. They are exactly. given an outline and then they act within it and then yeah. they make it great. So, I, I think, and, and the script and the script, the reality is it, it's almost like training wheels, right? Yes. I, I think you, you, you kind of stick closer to it the, the newer you are, but the more confidence you get, you can handle that the way you did, right, RJ? Like, then, then you're just like, come on, you, you read the person and then, and then let's move, all right? That, right. That's your, you know, we, we, uh, we, we, we're, that's, what you, that's when you learn to adapt to each situation, right? Well, and then, you know, the next phone call that I had right after that, I was on the phone for 30 minutes. I was talking about drinking coffee and, you know, doing all this other stuff. I mean, it was just... That's where that conversation went. Yeah. They didn't want to talk about real estate. They didn't want to talk about something else. They wanted to talk about all this other stuff. She wanted to talk about how she loves making coffee at home. She doesn't understand why people pay $5 a cup at Starbucks. And it's just <laughs> her. she remembers when coffee was, you know, 10 cents down at the gas station. And I'm like, all right. Like, I hope somehow this eventually turns back around and you want to sell your house. So we're going to talk about some coffee for a time. In. I don't even drink coffee, but all right, you know. So that's what you have to do, you know? So anyways, man, uh, let's, let's try it. We got to, let's see, how long is long? We, we got a couple more minutes here. So for everybody that's listening, man, I, I want them to find a way to connect with you, to follow you. I know you've got your own show where you interview people. I'm still waiting on my invite to get on the show. Oh, you, you, shameless you got, plug. I mean, you got you got people going on like Greg T. Shine over me. And I mean, <laughs> I know he's got like a little baby beard and he wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> but how can how can people follow you and 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 watch you on your journey? Thank you, man. Thank you. So um Facebook is where a lot of content goes into in terms of motivational videos and content. Sometimes there's content that's unreal. Un it doesn't, it's seemingly unrelated to, to, to real estate, but uh, um, it'll be, you know, self-development, motivational stuff, but also lots of tips on, um, especially for those who are newbie to intermediate um, wholesalers who want to build an actual business around wholesaling. Facebook, you can uh, reach out to me at Aaron Bevins. That's my name, E-A-R-O-N Bevins, B-E-V-A-N-S on Facebook. Instagram, we're starting to feed a lot more um, there. So you can reach out to me, Instagram, same way, Aaron Bevins. And um, come check out our show and I will definitely be having you on. <laughs> there we go. I got on the show. That's all I need to do is bring you on here. 
So, all right, I got I got one question for you. This this will be the the hard one. All right, I haven't asked this one in a long time. I used to ask this one on every episode, and I haven't asked it in a long time. I'm ready. Where do you want to be in five years? Man, that's a really good. So, wow, it is so interesting that you bring this up because my the so so the company and the brand that we're building right now. It's gone through an entire restructuring, right? And a lot of it is because, you know, whenever you're first getting started, you, you know, you, you don't know exactly, you know where you want to go, but you don't know exactly what to do in the beginning, right? So we've, we've done an entire restructuring of our business. And I've been thinking about that specific question over the past week or so. Where, where do I want to be? And this is, this is what, what I come up with in terms of the business, in terms of the business, um, I would like to have executives handling the business from A to Z, right? That means watching all of the production, um, handling all of the marketing, making sure everybody is paid. I mean, they are running the business. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm over, and I speak to them and only to them, right? And, and, and I'm, talking, I'm talking one or two people. Like these are the only people that I speak to. I don't speak to the employees. I don't speak, and it's not that, and it's not a, a level of status. Why? Oh, I don't speak to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not that. Um, it's time. Time. I don't have to speak to you regarding the business about problems going on in the business. That's what executives get paid for. And um, and my and then my my job is simply to continue growing the millennial entrepreneur brand which is empowering entrepreneurship. That's it, empowering entrepreneurship, but especially, especially to millennials. And the reason why I say especially to millennials, not that I don't feel Generation X and the silent generation and, well, not the silent generation as much, you know, they're, they're baby boomers, Gen X, Generation Y. I believe that they, they will benefit, they are benefiting from my content, but especially millennials, and here's why, RJ, because millennials, we're interesting, man. We are a very, very unique generation. And by millennials, I mean anybody um, born between like 1982 mm -hmm. and 1990. 1980 and 1990, if you were born between those years, right? That, that's what I have in mind in terms of millennial. Like if you played, if you played regular Nintendo and you can <laughs> remember it, you're probably a, a millennial. You know what right, I mean? Right. Um, and, and here's why we're unique. We were around, yes, there were video games, but I mean, there was regular Nintendo, man. I mean, we still played outside. We still got dirty. We still rode bikes. A lot of us still lived, but we could walk to school. Like, um, you know, we, we lived pre-internet, right? And a lot of us, uh, um, were introduced to the internet like either later in life in high school or in like fourth, fifth grade where we were learning Internet Explorer. You know what I mean? And so as, as somebody back then, you, you can find out if they knew life before the Internet. If you ask them, what sound does the Internet make when it's connected? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, you don't know. OK, you don't know about the life. My <laughs> try to try to make that sound right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but here here's the thing. But we're raised by by Gen Gen X and baby boomers, who who and and this is something I've talked to my team about. That um, difficult times make great people. Great people make soft kids, and soft kids make difficult times, mm -hmm. right? And you can see that played out through history and with, with the, the Romans and Egyptians and Persians. But you also see, you're, you're, we're also seeing that cycle in the United States of America. You had the silent generation, the great generation, uh, the great generation, the great depression, right? Tough times. So the silent generation, you had, their mindset was, you know, if, if you've ever done a deal, you know, the, these people are hoarders because they're, they're so resourceful and they don't want to waste that. That's a good plate. We bought that plate in 1960. Right. You know what I mean? Well, why would you, why would you, why would you throw away that plate? You know what I mean? So they raised the baby boomers. So the baby boomers 
you know, they, they, they were raised by strict parents. The baby boomers are alive during a time where American economy is just freaking exploding, right? Now, they raised Gen X. So Gen X is, is born during a time in U.S. history where the economy is stabilized, per se. It's stabilized, per se. They see some rough times, but it's stabilized, and it's just this powerhouse. And so Gen X now gives birth to the millennials. And the millennials are these kids that are raised in an economic powerhouse of a country. We had regular Nintendo. Like, we had good lives overall. But because of that, now millennials have some stereotypes attached to them that are like entitled, you know, lazy, um, um, self-absorbed, you know what I mean? And I feel like st stereotypes only feed into the paradigm, right? Well, I'm a millennial. I'm supposed to act like this, right? So now who are we going to raise, dude? You know what I mean? But here's the thing, I feel like our generation, you know, you know, the, you know, early, early 20s to, 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 to mid 30s, late, later 30s, millennials, we have enough time to change and affect an, an incredible impact, not only on, um, you know, society now, culture now, but also in raising the next generation, you know what I mean? And I feel like a major part of that is entrepreneurship, because the silent generation these guys knew in order to, to make money, I have to be resourceful. I have to get it how I live. And a lot of them started business, businesses, built businesses, did joint ventures, owned land. You know what I mean? And I feel like as a, as a generation, millennials are now, it's a perfect storm because it's cool now because of Gary V and Max Maxwell and Tony Robbins to talk about being a CEO and being a boss. So it's cool, but also it's needed. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so that that's where I see myself in five years. Um, the 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 business is grown to an actual business. I think right now it's still S quadrant. I want to build it to a business, be a business, and then um, the focus then is is growing the brand and, and empowering entrepreneurship. I love it, man. Um, it, it's very rare for me to not really know somebody and be as inspired as I am by you. Uh, continue doing what you do. Uh, I will support you during your, your entire journey, buddy. I look forward to watching you explode here in the future and watching the Millennial Entrepreneur brand take off. Um, I'll be one of your biggest fans. Thanks for coming on the Titanium Vault uh, today. Guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. Um, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Titanium Vault with your host, RJ Bates III. For more info and to stay up to date, visit www.podcast.thetitaniumvault.com and on facebook.com slash thetitaniumvault. If you enjoyed the episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time on the Titanium Vault.